This is DC Lesson 3, Part B, Continuing in Ohm's Law. So this lesson, we're going to actually look, not really look at any physics at all. We're going to discuss the role of metric prefixes. So we're going to be actually talking math, math, math. So this is uh, Section 3.3 .3 from our textbook. And metric prefixes. So a metric prefix is another way of saying a multiplier. It's a way of making large or small numbers easier to handle. So when we're working in electrical physics, we can be dealing with some very, very minute numbers and some very, very large ones. And this is a helpful way to be able to deal with those kinds of numbers. So for example, 800 kilometers, or you might see it expressed as 800 km, is easier than saying 80000 or 800,000 meters. The letter K is for kilo, which is the metric prefix that we used in the example above. Kilo meaning a thousand. That's what a kilo is. So if it's a kilometer, it's a thousand meters. If it's a kilogram, it's a thousand grams. So a metric prefix replaces groups of zeros that are always in multiples of three. So here's some metric prefixes that we tend to use in electrotechnology. Now I'm going to get you to look at the center of the actual table first. And in the middle of the table, you'll see this word I've put in called unity. So right smack here across the middle is if we had a multiplier of one and we call that unity. So as we go up in size in this direction, we go up by a thousand, we use the symbol lowercase k and we call it kilos. And an example of that is 33 kV or 33,000 volts. So it's much easier to say and to write it down and express it to say 33 kV than it is to say 33,000 volts. The next one is mega. And we use the capital M. And mega just means one million. So there's a thousand, a thousand, thousand, there's one million. So mega means a million. So if I had a resistor that was 39 mega ohms, it would be 39 million ohms. Continuing our trip up, this one you may have come across on your computer, giga. Quite often flash drives and things that uh, we use these days are in gigabytes. So Giga, we use capital G, and you can see here there's a thousand, there's a million, so it's a thousand million. So over here in our little example, instead of saying 2,000 million, which is what that is, 2,000 million watts, it's much easier to say 2 gigawatts. And then our final one, Terra. There's a thousand, there's a million, there's a thousand million, there's a thousand, thousand million. So trying to express a number that large is very, very difficult. So we use Terra and we use the capital T. An example of that, something that was running at that very, very high frequency, we might say it's moving at 2 terahertz. 
you won't find too many things that operate at 2 terahertz. That's an exorbitantly high frequency. Okay, so we've got kilos, megas, gigas and teras. So let's go down in the opposite direction. And I'll just change the color of my pen. So as we move in the opposite direction, we've got millis, small m, lowercase m, 0.001 or thousandths. So two milli ohms is the same as two thousandths of an ohm or 0 0.002 amperes. Micro, we use this symbol, looks like a backwards Y. Sometimes when we're using a keyboard, we'll often use a Y because it's just easier. So a micro is a millionth. So something that would say four microfarads, it's 0.000004 of a farad. So typically capacitors actually do have very small values. So we tend to see lots of capacitors represented in microfarads. And we come down to the nano, uses lowercase n, and that's times 10 to the minus 9. And you can see here, we might be talking 9 nano amps or 0 0.0000009 amperes. You can see how boring that would get after a while. It's much easier to say 9 nano amps. And then a lowercase p, we use for picos for very small. That's times 10 to the minus 12. And again, we quite often get values in amperes down in pico amps. And again, much easier to say three pico amps than list off all the zeros, etc. So there you can see our terms, whether we're going up getting bigger or from unity getting smaller, it's much easier to use these metric prefixes. So here's a quick little example. I'll just change the color of my uh, pen again. So we want to convert 3.9 megavolts that's what the M stands for here, megavolts into volts. So here's our starting point. It's where our decimal point would be. And we're effectively moving our decimal point six places to the right. So we're going down one, two, three, four, five, six. So there it is converted. Instead of saying 3.9 megavolts, we would say 3,900,000 volts. But let me tell you, it's much easier to say 3.9 megavolts. So an example, we're moving the other way, we're con going to convert 25.8 microamps. And again, here's the starting point for our decimal point, but this time we're going to move to the left. And we're going to go one two, three, four, five, and six. 
so we end up with 0 0.0000258 amperes which is what that number is there but again it's much easier to say 25.8 microamps so just so we get it well and truly in our heads here's another quick worked example If we want to write 4.7 milliamps and we want to put it in amperes, we're in thousandths. So we're going to move the decimal point three places to the left. So here's our 4.76. And we want to move it three places to the left. So here's our one, two, three. That's where our decimal point ends up. We've got to put a zero in front of that so nothing gets confused. And our final answer is 0 0.00476 amperes to do our conversion. So we've moved from milliamps to amps. Another example, just to get it in our heads. This time we've got, what's this? 2,560,000 ohms, and we want to convert it into mega ohms. So we're going to take our two, five, six, zero, 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 and here's our decimal point down here. And we're now going to move it six places to the left. Remember, mega means times 10 to the six. So we're going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, and our decimal point ends in there, so we end up with 2.56, and we're going to put it in mega ohms, or you might even express it as mega R. Ah four ohms as well. So we simply move the decimal point six places to the left. Sorry, got a little bit lost there. So back on track, what if we were to rewrite uh, 0 0.56 into amps? And we want to get it into milliamps. We're simply wanting to move it, milli means times 10 to the minus three. So we're going to move one, two, three points to the right, giving us 5.6 milliamps. So this table gives us just a little quick summary of using our prefixes, starting at the top, mega. So mega, we use the capital M. And effectively, this represents times 10 to the power of 6. And we're dividing by a million. Or we're multiplied by a million, depending which way you're going.
kilo. Small letter K times 10 to the 3. If you want to divide, you move to the left three positions. If you want to multiply, then again move to the right three positions. Our millis, small m times 10 to the minus 3, multiply, then move to the right. If you want to divide, simply move three decimal places to the left. And finally, our micro. If you haven't already worked it out, that's going to be 10 times 10 to the minus 6, which means we're going to move 6 places to the right if you want to multiply, 6 places to the left if you want to divide. So you can see that the exponent values represent the number of places that we're moving. You can see that in all of these. Now, decimal points when labeling resistors and using them circuit diagrams is pretty important. Um, values expressed with prefixes often have a decimal point. For example, um, 6,800,000 ohms converted to mega ohms is 6.8 mega ohms. However, on a circuit diagram or the component itself, the decimal point could be badly printed or even missing at times. So to avoid this dilemma, the prefix symbol is sometimes placed where the decimal point would otherwise be. So another way of writing our 6.8 is to write 6m8 omega. In other words, 6.8 meg ohms. So a resistor of a value of 2,700 ohms could also be written as 2 K7 omega or 2.7 kilo ohms. Similarly, a current of 25.6 microamps could also be written as 25 micro 6A. And similarly, a voltage of 30.5 millivolts could be written as 30M5 volts. So you can see here they. Um, This is a 1.5 ohm, but on the actual resistor, they've written 1R5. So the R becomes the decimal point. Here, we've got 56 ohms, so they've simply written 5, 6, or 56R. Similarly here, 470 ohms, and it's written as 470R. This one here, 3.3K, so again the K represents the 3 as the decimal point. Another one here at 6.8K, and finally the K here representing a decimal point at 8.2K. You will probably be asking me before too long, what do the J's mean on the ends here? Some of them are J's, some of them are K's. There is actually a table for this kind of resistor, and this is the tolerance. So this is the resistance. Resistance tolerance. And it's always a tolerance in percent. But in our practical uh, section on this lesson, I'll uh, show you the table and explain what those letters mean. So that brings us to the end of uh, DC Lesson 3 Part B.